turning to Psalms chapter 37, the 12th verse. I'm going to read through verse 15, Psalms 37 and 12. about everybody wanting M&M's. Don't see me after church. You're not getting mine. You're going to have to get your own. Psalms 37 and 12. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Verse 13. The Lord shall laugh at him for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. I'm going to take those scriptures and I want to preach to you just for a few minutes here this, this afternoon. I want to talk about Jesus, everybody say Jesus. Jesus. A turnaround specialist. Everybody say Jesus. A turnaround specialist. How many know Jesus is a turnaround specialist? Well, I believe we could do a little bit better than that right now. How many know Jesus is a turnaround specialist? shout yes thank you Lord for your spirit we feel here today thank you for every individual every mom every dad every man every woman every teenager every child that's here pray you bless every one of us those that are here that need the Holy Ghost it's the will of God they be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost I rebuke every spirit of opposition and hindrance now loose the Holy Ghost to have its way today we give you praise and honor for it in Jesus name and everybody said in Jesus' name, you may be seated. God bless you. I've read about these people. I don't know them personally, but just from what I've read, they are called hired guns, slash and burn artists, hatchet men, some people call them. They are what people know them as the 911 of corporate management. Their job is to come in and to breathe new life into dying companies, to restore sickly corporations back to health and to jumpstart the engines of business that have somewhat run out of steam. It's people that have this knack for identifying problems and figuring out what to do about them and then also to present the solution to the problem. They are known as corporate turnaround specialists. One particular man, his name is Chris Smith, he says... He said, I can walk into a multi-million dollar company. He said, after being there for a short time, he said, I can identify the problems that are causing this company to go down and about to be bankrupt. And he says, and then I can, I can offer them the solutions that they need to turn this company around. And they charge hundreds of dollars an hour just to consult with you and to spend time with you and your company because they have they have a reputation of being able to turn companies around amen they said you know some people don't like doing this because they don't want to do the dirty work they don't want to point out what's wrong and they don't want to trim down things that, that, that they maybe are partial to or firing employees or letting people go. But if you want to turn it around, you have got to be able to make the right 
decision. Amen. I am certainly not here to offer you any corporate advice today. But, but I want to present to you for the next few minutes not just a man that can turn a company around, but I want to present to you another man by the name of Jesus Christ that cannot just turn a corporate business around, but this man that can turn your life around. Amen. And that can turn your family around. And that can turn your children around. And that can turn your marriage around. And that can turn your future around. How many believe that Jesus is that turnaround specialist? Would you clap your hands to that God one more time here today? Come on, anybody believe on Sunday afternoon that we are serving a God that can turn anything around? I don't know what you walked in here today with, uh, but I want you to know before you leave, God uh, can turn that situation uh, around and he can reverse it. Uh, he can put it on the right road and he can make it right. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. God is a turnaround specialist. Amen. Can anybody agree with me and say he's done it for me? Has anybody, does anybody here know that God can turn sickness around? This message ain't going to get real deep here today, so don't wait on that to come. I couldn't get deep if I wanted to. But how many know God can turn sickness around? How many know God can turn addictions around? How many know God can turn wayward kids around? How many know God can turn families around? How many know God can turn people that are going in the wrong direction? He can turn their lives around and put them on the direction toward heaven. Hallelujah. God is a turnaround specialist. If you're here and you got a situation that you need turned around, I want you to know you're at the right place at the right time. And there's a God here today that can turn that thing around. Amen. He's a specialist at turning things around. It's not like this is the first time he's ever done it. This is what he specializes in. He specializes in turning things around. Now, if you were sick and you went to a doctor, you told the doc, well, something's going on. I feel like this pressure's on my chest. My arm's been hurting a little bit. So and so. The doctor check you out, and he's a general practitioner. He said, Well, I don't know. There may be something going on there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you to somebody else. Because this guy specializes with heart problems. I'm going to send you to him. I'm just a general deal. I can maybe see maybe something ain't right, but I know this man. That this is what he does. This this is this is his career. He specializes in this area. And so I'm going to send you to this heart specialist. Or it could be anything you could fill in the blank. And there are people that specialize in certain things. And they're going to send you to that specialist. But I want you to know today that whatever it is you are representing in this service this afternoon, that if you bring it to the Lord, you are bringing it to a man that specializes in turning that particular thing around. You may bring it to Sammy Cheryl, and I'm going to say, man, I don't know if I've ever dealt with anything like that or not. I've seen problems before, but I've never seen that particular problem before. Maybe 
you bring it to Pastor Gaddy and say, well, Brother Gaddy, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm going through. And Brother Gaddy may say, well, you know what? I might have dealt with something similar to that before, but I've never really dealt with anything exactly like that before. But if you bring it to Jesus Christ, the Lord is going to say, you know what? This ain't the first time I've ever seen that. I've seen this over and over and over, and I've turned it around before. And if I've done it before, I can do it again. How many know that God is no respecter of person? If he's done it for somebody else, uh, he'll do it for you. If he turned it around for somebody else, uh, he'll turn it around for you. How many believe God can turn somebody's life around? God can turn somebody's situation, somebody's plight, somebody's sickness, uh, somebody's addiction, somebody's trouble. God can turn it around. He's a specialist in The wicked plotteth against the just, the Bible said, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Bible said, The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The Bible said, The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. The Bible said their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. I'm impromptu majorly. I wish I brought a sword, but I never think about stuff till I start preaching. Then, man, I wish I'd have thought about that before I got this is the best sword I got for the time being. The Bible said, the Bible said the, the wicked plotteth against the just. He's out there planning. And he gnasheth upon him with his teeth. He's making all these plans and all these accusations. But the Bible said that the Lord shall laugh at him. The Lord goes, ha. For he seeth that his day is coming. And then the Bible said in verse 15, where the Bible says in verse 14, they have drawn the sword and they have drawn the bow. In other words, they pulled their sword out and they got the sword looking at you. Anybody ever felt like the enemy had the sword at your neck? I've been there before. Anybody really know what I'm talking about? You feel like if any way you move, you're going to get the sword. You're backed up in the corner and he's got the sword pulled out at you. And I'm sorry to be so unprofessional here today. But he's got the sword. He's pulled it out and, he's, and you got you in a corner. And any way you move, you're going to get hurt any way you move. And the Bible says he's, he's plotting. He's drawn out the sword. and He's got the sword pointing at you. But the Bible said that the Lord's just laughing. Because the Lord said, you know, when the end result happens, he said, that sword that you've drawn out and you pointed, he said, I can step in and I can turn that around. And the Bible said that their sword shall enter into their own heart. You know what that tells me? Somewhere between verse 14 and verse 15, the specialist stepped in and he said, let's turn that sword around. And the sword that once was going this way, now it's coming this way, and it enters into their own heart. Can I tell you, God knows how to turn your situation around. God knows, come on, somebody help me now. God knows how to turn your dilemma around. Where Brother Cheryl, any way I move, I'm going to get hurt. Anything I do, there's going to be damage. Not when you come to the specialist. Not when you come to Jesus. He knows how to turn it. He knows how to reverse it. He knows how to alter that situation. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Man, you look at Goliath. Goliath looked at David and he said, man, you come to me with, with sticks and stones. He said, I'm going to take your carcass and I'm going to feed it to the fowl of the air and the beast of the field. You see this sword right here? Goliath or David said, you come to me with a sword and spear. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He slew him, knocked him down, jumped on his back and pulled the sword out that was meant for David and he took it and turned it around and he cut his own head off God knows how to turn things around if you're Mordecai and Esther you can hear the clanging of the hammers you can hear the building of the gallows you can see them tying the noose in the rope these gallows are for you this noose is for the Jews but when the specialist gets involved he takes the same rope he takes the same gallows and he hangs Haman and all of his imps because we got a God who knows how to turn things around I feel the Holy Ghost now on Sunday afternoon and I got a feeling somebody else is getting a hold of what I'm talking about. It don't have to be that way forever. You don't have to live with it. You don't have to learn to cope with it. There's a God that can change it. There's a God that can turn it around. You don't have to be bound forever. You don't have to be sick forever. You don't have to deal with it forever. But God can change it. He can turn it. He's a specialist. We're dealing with a specialist here. The devil said, well, if I can get him on a cross, I'll kill him on that cross. Little did the devil know. That same cross was going to be the cross that gives us our victory. Because God knows how to turn things around. The devil said, if I can put a spear in his side and a crown of thorns on his head and get the blood out of his body, little did the devil know he was dealing with a specialist here. That, hey, if you do that, I'm going to take that same blood and I'm going to wash people's sins away and I'm going to make them new. Devil, you don't know you're dealing with a specialist here. He knows how to turn things around. And that same cross can give you victory today. And that same blood can give you victory in new life and forgive you of your sin come on God can do what the doctor can't do he can do what the medicine cabinet can't do God knows how to turn things around oh let's all clap our hands of the Lord together today come on everybody one more time clap your hands to Jesus Christ God knows how to turn things around. Jesus came to the tomb of, of Lazarus. And uh, Lazarus had been dead for four days. He came to where they was and they had done put him in the tomb and they had done rolled the stone away. They had done that done wrapped him up in grave clothes. Pardon again my unprofessionalism. I need one of you young guys to help me here. I don't want to just volunteer for me. That's right. Appreciate your volunteer. But they came. That guy is so off the chain. So somebody, when Lazarus died, you know, they had the, the Bible said they wrapped him up in grave clothes. Somebody's got to do it. He's bound hand and foot. Then 
to have some more guys because this is a this is a big old stone, and we all get together, and we roll the stone in front of the in front of the tomb. Then we all go our way. And we cry some more. Ooh-hoo. Come on, y'all can cry better than that. We're crying. All of a sudden, the specialist shows up. Take me to him. They took the Lord down to where. Lazarus had been put in the grave. Jesus said, you know what? I'm going to get ahead of myself here and I'll come back to it. When he was out of the tomb, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And here's a man that had been bound hand and foot with grave clothes. But the specialist comes on the scene and the specialist says, loose him and let him go. Do you know that God is in the loosing business? Amen. He is not a novice when it comes to loosing people. He is not a novice when it comes to setting people free. He is not new on the block when it comes to breaking people's chains and giving people liberty. God is a specialist when it comes to giving people freedom and liberty and letting them go. Can somebody say amen right there? Jesus is a turn around specialist. So the Lord finally said, loose him and let him go. The Lord is in the loosing business. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. In Matthew 18 and 27, it was the Lord that typed himself as a servant and moved with compassion. And then he told them that was full of debt. He forgave them of their debt. And then in Mark 11 and 2, the Bible told the disciples, go and find a coat. You're going to find him tied up. And he said, I want you to loose him. And he said, I want you to bring him to me. Amen. And then Luke 13 and 12, Jesus said to the woman that was bowed over, he said, woman, be thou loosed of thy spirit of infirmity. This is a God that knows how to loose. This is a God that's in the business of undoing, untying, breaking chains, setting people free, giving giving liberty. He is a turnaround specialist. Hallelujah. This woman that was bound with the spirit of infirmity, the Bible says that Jesus looked at her when he said, be loosed of that spirit of infirmity. The Pharisees came and, and besought the Lord and said, you know what? Ought not this woman to have been loose being a daughter of Abraham? And, and they said, this just ain't right. This is the seventh day. This is, this is something that you've overstepped your boundary. This is the Lord's day. And, and the Lord looked at them and he said, you know what? This is a daughter of Abraham and she should have been loosed after these 18 years he said it's the right thing to do I know you're focused on the Lord's day it's the seventh day but Jesus said I'm focused on the the Lord's daughter because the Lord's daughter is more important than the Lord's day that's what I'm concerned with I'm not concerned with tradition I'm not concerned with ritual I'm concerned with my daughters and with my sons and when the devil's got them tied up and the devil's got them bound up I'll push the Lord's day back to deliver my daughter or to deliver my son. And that's what the Lord's come here to do on this Sunday. He's come here to your sons and to his daughters. He's come to loose you. He's come to set you free. He's come to give you liberty. He's a specialist in turning things around. So he comes down to the tomb. I'm back in comes down the tomb. Take me to Because this is a specialist. Where's he at? Take me to Take him down there. The specialist walks up. And Jesus says, all right, you've done got him in the tomb. You've done put the stone in front of him, but I'm the God that turns things around. So, hey, I know somebody's done put the stone there. But since I'm here, I come to reverse this whole process. 
I want somebody to roll the stone away. So here comes these guys. I don't know the Bible doesn't say, but I'm just imagining. They're probably the same guys that rolled the stone in front of the tomb. More likely could have been the guys that rolled them away from them. So here we are. And these guys are saying, well, man, I'm getting tired of dealing with this stone. I just now rolled it in front of them. But when the Lord steps in, the Lord says, I know the stone's been rolling this way. But when I step in, we're going to start rolling the stone the other way. So the Lord specialist says, we're going to reverse this thing. Let's roll the stone back. And they push the stone away from the tomb. And then, and then Lazarus had been put in the grave and he had been bound hand and foot with grave clothes and the voice of the Lord cries out and says, come on now, Lazarus. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible said, he that was bound hand and foot with grave clothes come out of the tomb. Right? Are we on the same page now? And so here he is, he's out of the grave, but he's still bound hand and foot with grave clothes. But here's a God, ever since he stepped on the scene, he's been reversing the situation that's been going one way. He said, I know the stone's been going this way, but we need to send it that way. I know Lazarus has been going that way in the tomb, but I'm going to bring him out this way. He's a God that knows how to reverse it. He knows how to turn it. He knows how to alter it. He knows how to undo it. I don't know if you're here today and thinking, well, I just don't know how to turn this around. I don't know how to make this go another way. It just seems like it's going uh, in the wrong direction. Well, I've got good news for you. You're in the right place uh, at the right time. Uh, and the specialist uh, is on duty. And he's here to help you. And he's here to heal you. And he's here to deliver you. Am I making sense so far? I hope that I am. Man that's turning things around. And here's Lazarus bound hand and foot with grief. And the Lord looks at him and he says, Loose him and let him go. Speculation. But I may, if you'd allow me to have some latitude here, that possibly the same folks that rolled the stone away or in place was the same ones that rolled it away. And plus, possibly. The same ones that wrapped him up is the same ones that unwrapped him. So the Lord says, loose him and let him go. Before the Lord got there, all the bandages were full. But when the Lord showed up, the Lord said, I'm going to undo this thing here. I Since he's been wrapped up, now let's unwrap him because I'm a God that turns things around. So he starts going the other way. He starts unwrapping. He starts undoing. He starts untying because when God steps on the scene, he's dealt with this before. He's encountered this before. He knows how to turn it around. He knows how to alter it. Well, Brother Cheryl, you don't know what I'm dealing with. I may not, but there's a God in heaven who's dealt with it before, who's turned it around before, who's healed it before, who's moved it before. He's a specialist in turning things around. Oh, would somebody a new life clap your hands of the Lord together here? I'm just trying to get somebody's attention and let you know you ain't got to live with bandage. You don't have to live with grave clothes. You don't have to live in the tombs. You don't have to live with change. He's a specialist in turning things around. Somebody shout amen. Thank you. Musicians, would you come today? How many know God can turn things around? He can do it. I don't know what you're representing today. But God wants to turn it around for you. I don't know what it is you can't get, get undone from. You try to untie it, but you can't untie it. You try to undo it, but you can't undo it. The Lord said, you know what? I've undone that before. I've untied that. 
to that log. I've seen that log. That ain't the first time I've ever seen that disease. I've cured that disease before. That ain't the first time I've ever delivered anybody of that. I've delivered people of that before. I'm a specialist in that. You don't know what I got, but it's what God knows what you got. God's a specialist with it. And God can turn it around. I'm going to witness in my spirit here today. That somebody's latching on to what I'm saying. But also feel in the Holy Ghost, those of you that are starting to latch on, the devil's starting to resist you right now, saying, well, he's not talking to you. You, you don't apply to this situation. You're not a candidate to what he's talking about. But right now, right in the middle of this service, I'm going to take authority over those voices of the enemy. And by the name of Jesus, I cast that spirit down and I cast those lies down. And I'm telling everybody under the sound of my voice today, it applies to you. It applies to your life. It applies to your family. It applies to what you're dealing with. You're not here by accident. This is no coincidence. The Lord is here and he's here for you. He's here to help you. He's here to turn it around for you. He's here to untie it for you. He's here to undo it for you. He's a turnaround specialist. And He's here to do it for you. Oh, clap your hands to the Lord, somebody. He's here to forgive you of that sin. He's here to deliver you of that addiction. He's here to fill you with the Holy Ghost. He's a specialist, and he's on duty, and he's here for you. Oh, would somebody lift your voice to the Lord right now? Would somebody praise the name of Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Devil, you're a liar. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout it again, hallelujah. Shout it to where the devil can hear you. Hallelujah. <laughs> you may go to some specialist and say, ah, oh, come on, man. Specialist will be with in a little while. Sit down right there. He's dealing with a lot of stuff. He may get to you. Just, just wait on him. And you're waiting there, and 30 minutes goes by. Where's he at? An hour goes by. Man, I wish the specialist would call my name. I'm sitting here in the doctor's office, and I know he's dealing with a lot of things and dealing with a lot of problems. An hour and a half goes by. Man, where's the specialist at? I, I wish he could help me with my problem now. And then two hours go by. Somebody comes out to console you. Well, we're just we're behind schedule right now. The doctor's got to go to lunch. Soon it's lunch over. He's going to come. He's going to help you. And then you wait another hour. And then lunch comes by. And finally the specialist calls your name and brings you back to a room. And he sets you there for another hour. And you wait on him. And somebody else comes and checks your blood pressure. And looks in your ears and your mouth and throat and nose. And say, well, you just sit right here on this table. And the specialist will be in a little while. And he's going he's gonna to check on you. And he's going to look at you. And and, and this that I'm talking about men specialists now. And after a long ordeal, the specialists walk in now. Now what's going on now? Tell me, tell me what's wrong. Tell me what you're dealing with. And tell me what tell me what you're going through. And the specialist looks at you and you gotta tell the specialist everything that's going on. But I'm not gonna go through the whole spiel, but I want you to know today that the specialist is on duty in this house on Sunday afternoon. And I'm telling you right here, it's about 12, 16 right now. But I want everybody in this house to know that the Lord is not looking at you and saying, well, today ain't your day. You're going to have to come back next Sunday. You're going to have to come back next month. You're going to have to come back next year because I'm going to wait to have, I'm dealing with so much right now. You know what the specialist here is going to do? Jesus says, come on, man. I already know what you're dealing with. Come on. I already know what you're facing. You're right on time. You're already here. I'm here to work for you. I'm here to move for you. The good thing about this specialist, he already knows what it is. He already knows what you're facing. He already knows 
what you're dealing with. Come on, Jesus. I need you to turn it for me. I need you to reverse it. I need you to turn it around. That's it. Let's lift our voice to him now. Come on, church. Come on, somebody. Lift your voice to heaven. I feel it. I feel the witness. I feel the witness. The Holy Ghost witness. The Spirit witness. I'm not going to linger here now. But I'm not going to pull no punches either. If you're here today and you say, Brother Cheryl, I got something I need God to turn it around. I got something in my personal life. I got something in my family. I got something I need the specialist to turn around. I need him to turn this situation around. If you need forgiveness, if you need the Holy Ghost, if you got sickness in your body, if it's addiction, if it's your kids, if it's your marriage, but you say, God, I need you to turn this thing. I need you to roll the stone away. I need you to unwrap me. I need you to loose me. I need you to turn it. I'm not going to linger here now. But if you feel the pulse of what I'm preaching about, and you can identify with what I'm preaching about, I want you to come join me front and center right here, right now. In the name of Jesus, I want you to come here with boldness with me right now. If you say, I've got something I need God to turn around. I know we're already at the altar, but I want you to come to the middle with me, or at least make an effort to get close to the middle. That's it. Come on. That's all right. I'm going to wait on you. Come on now. Just so we're clear, you're not coming to the preacher. I'm not the specialist. You're not coming to the church. The church ain't the specialist. You're not coming to a religion. The religion ain't the specialist. But you're coming to the man called Jesus. You're coming to the man called Jesus. He's here and he's on duty and he's here to help you. He's here to deliver you. He's here to heal you. He's here to He's here to fill you. I'm waiting on you now.